So we're going to look at Spider-Man Miles Morales. So this is a game where the content of the game is purely magenta. I mean, you get to be Spider-Man, right? And how mm-hmm. cool is that? I mean, I've wanted to be Spider-Man since yeah. I was like six years. I mean, I remember being on my couch and just like fantasizing about like Thwick, just grab things that I want and, you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. fantasize about being Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah. With this game, I can be, and it's gorgeous, but it's got magenta content. However, the theme of the game, the framing device, the story itself is being told from a green point of view. I mean, this isn't Peter Parker. This is Miles Morales. This is sort of, you know, yeah. a multiculturalization <laughs> of Spider-Man, which is really, really cool and really, really exciting. So it's got strong green themes. The game itself is about neighborhood and community and right. doing what's right. And then the, uh, the actual gameplay itself is red. It's red gameplay because you're just playing as Spider-Man. You are stuck within your own perspective. Mm. You're Mm. only ever playing that game and your job is to be a hero, right? Mm. So this is a perfect example of those three categories really coming to life because we've got magenta content, green theme, red gameplay. It's interesting. So like actually the one, the, um, the level of development that where I had the most questions about like analyzing games is a magenta. Mm-hmm. Um, so like, for example, and then maybe it's like, who's inhabiting this, like, so versus like, what's the structure of the game? Like, what does it impose on you versus what can you interpret? And like, so normally I'm thinking like, well, everybody knows Spider-Man. And if you're playing Spider-Man, you know, Spider-Man. So like, you know that, yeah, you, you are a hero, but you're a hero for a green theme. So would that very, really be red, you know, just to be, because, you know, heroes, you're always going to be an individual, even mm-hmm. if you're a part of a group. So like, um, that's a question for me of like, oh, is it red versus like, um, like Grand Theft Auto, when we talk about that one, that's like, how you play is, is red, you know, like, it's heavy. like, and that'll be that'll be the one. Well, one yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, know? it's it's like, when it happens, it's it's like heavier, like, it feels very red, like, you know, like, there's even part of like, oh, am I gonna play this game? Um, but yeah, that's kind of interesting thing around some of the superhero stuff that I, I was kind of wondering about, you know? Yeah. So, you um, know, again, when I, when I'm focusing on gameplay, I'm yeah. really trying to focus in on what exactly are the concrete operations that you as a gamer are doing? How uh-huh. are you interfacing with it? So uh-huh. that's, so I'm being kind of rigid with how I'm doing games. Yeah, yeah. That's why I say it's red. You're right that you're, 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 you're playing in a red style for green reasons. These are sort of the, the mm. justifications for being a hero. Gotcha. But, the actual gameplay is gotcha. Okay, cool. That, that makes sense. That explanation there. Yep. And uh, for magenta, can you tell me like uh, your interpretation interpretation here? Magenta content is that like you know the kind of Anything. surreal like movements you know like that you have spider webs in your hands and that you can use them like it doesn't really line up to there's some there's some whimsicalness about it that, that yeah. kind of thing. It's yeah. basically magical powers, magical thinking, wish gotcha. fulfillment, things like uh-huh. that. So cool. being able to being able to swing like that from from yep. skyscrapers or yep. being able to to you know move your hands in a certain way and cast a spell. This is all very early. So concept. I suppose um, I haven't ever played this, but like World of Warcraft stuff, I, I assume like definitely yep heavily. would be like that because like wizards and potions and things. Yeah, War, Warcraft. I would say the content actually kind of goes is. from magenta to amber. Yeah, makes sense. Yep. Okay. And probably has orange themes and orange gameplay. Sure. So that would be that'd be my my analysis of, of Warcraft. So this next one is another fantasy games. Fantasy games are great to put into the magenta bucket for all the reasons that we just said. This one is interesting. And this is one of just so you guys know, one of the best games I have ever played in terms of world building. I'm gonna say that because all of these games I chose are some of my favorite games. So you're gonna hear me say over and over again. Yeah, yeah. This is you, my you... favorite game. I'm never gonna lie to you, they're all my favorite games. This is a game called The Witcher, actually The Witcher 3, uh, which now has an amazing Netflix series if you guys haven't checked that out. So The Witcher 3, I don't know about it. but yeah, you gotta start with sexy <laughs> girl here. Uh, it, it features magenta and red content. Uh, it's got amber and orange themes. It sort of takes place in a renaissance, a magical renaissance world. And then it's got uh, red gameplay. Again, you're mostly playing mm-hmm. in the, from a single That's perspective. Cool. Yeah. And mm-hmm. your job is to be a hero yeah. and to save the day. So this one fine. feels like squarely like in that analysis makes real perfect sense to me. Yeah, yep. cool. Yep. And then, Ryan, I know this mm. next game is one that we're both very excited about. 
Uh, this is another great example of Magenta, I think. This is, guys, one of my favorite games, one of the best games I've ever played. I'm seriously going to be a Yeah, no, I, no, I think, like, I don't throw that term around a lot, like, and even kind of regardless of my relationship to the game, and I haven't even finished it yet, it just is striking. It's not even the kind of game I typically play. Yeah. I'm usually playing, like, you know, Halo, Battlefield, yep. uh, Destiny. But it was striking. It is, to me, one of the best games ever made, just like objectively. You know? Absolutely. And that game is Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah. And, you know, there's there's so many cool things to say about this game. And one of the coolest things is that it takes place in Colorado. And it has, yeah. Like, yeah, that was really cool. Like post, post, post apocalyptic depictions of, uh, you know, it's got like Red Rocks Theater and a number of other Colorado landmarks, which is cool. And it's got robot dinosaurs, which is about as rad as it gets. I mean, come on, y'all. Robot dinosaurs? Robot dinosaurs. <laughs> I mean, look at that. Look at that giant brontosaurus looking thing. So Horizon Zero Dawn, it's got magenta red content. So, the sto you know, you're basically, you're playing a tribal warrior who's trying to make sense of this, this bizarre post-apocalyptic world that they've inherited with all sort of the remnant technologies that were left behind. It's got amber to an orange theme. This is a lot about sort of good and evil. There's actually a lot of dialogue. There's a lot of sort of moralizing. I would say humanistic moralizing in the theme. And it's another one that's got red gameplay. You're being a hero. One thing yep. I think we'll notice is that red gameplay is oftentimes, oftentimes leads to some of the most fun gaming experiences out there. Yeah. It's fun to be a hero. Yeah, totally. And this game, I'd say, uh, because it's so good, I mean, and how it was developed. I mean, really, like, what they ha how they created the game to, in terms of technology, like to make this world is was pretty innovative and revolutionary. And it's a really satisfying, immersive world in so many ways, including the storyline. And because it's so well made, it's it's hard for me to like pin it down more than even any other game on the list because I can like see every most of the levels you know even even potentially someone playing this game could feel into green here depending on on yeah. their orientation interpretation there but it's beautiful it's like you want to feel like magical that's there in spades you want to feel like a hero that's there you want to feel that you're doing something for a group of people you're there you know right. uh, the all the machinery and the strategy you know it's all there it's it's yeah. quite wonderful and and it's all under girded by this orange science fiction story which does yeah. also has some green tones to it there's a green kind of po you know green tone, yeah in the in the storyline and i'll tell you what normally i don't give a shit about stories in games like it, usually it's a it's it gets on my nerves i'm just like i just want to play the game but this one i actually pay attention to the story so yeah it's a great story and it really stuck with me so uh play this game if you haven't the next fantasy game is uh divinity original sin 2 uh and man this game is epic it is a masterpiece a top down dungeons and dragons style hmm. uh uh strategy fantasy game and it's it's incredible i mean this is hmm. this is sort of the pinnacle of the formula from games like baldur's gate and icewind dale and a couple other uh nostalgic pieces which i'll show you guys in a second um but you know and i wanted to also mm -hmm. take a moment here to to sort of well, first off, let me describe this game. This game is is magenta content, magenta to amber themes, and orange gameplay. It's a strategy game, and it's a fairly deep strategy game. You're playing with spellcraft and different special attack moves and dial endless dialogue options. That's where a lot of the orange and even sometimes maybe a little green comes in, uh, where the dialogue options actually shape sort of you know the story itself. Um, it's very, very complex game, but it's all within sort of the idiom of, you know, magic and, you know, swords and sorcery and uh, Dungeons and Dragons type stuff. Um, and I want to take a moment, Ryan, to actually talk about Dungeons mm. and Dragons, because Dungeons and Dragons, again, is an influence for so many of these games, particularly fantasy games. So many of these games sort of fell in the shadows of Dungeons and Dragons. And to mm. me, Dungeons and Dragons is actually a proto integral game in so many critical ways, mm. right? So, I mean, even from the level of like character development, you're literally playing with levels and lines. You have strength, dexterity, intelligence, wisdom, charisma, mm. constitution. These are all lines of development and they all have different sort of skill levels associated with them. So you got levels and lines right there out of the gate. The alignment yeah. system, which has two axes, right? It goes from good, neutral, evil, uh, and it has lawful, neutral, chaotic. Um, everyone knows chaotic good is the best alignment out there. 
Um, but even yeah. that, the alignment system is looking at interior morals versus exterior ethics, mm -hmm. right? Here's mm -hmm. what I believe versus here is how I conduct myself in the outer world. So it's mm -hmm. got these, again, these proto integral impulses packed into mm -hmm. Dungeons and Dragons uh, for mm -hmm. the last, what, 40 years, mm -hmm. um, which is incredible. And so many games have come out of uh, sort of the D&D rule book. Yeah, totally. Cool. It's this beautiful combination of like math geekery and like role playing and storytelling. Uh, yeah, which, which I'm gonna check this one out. I think it's it's it lights up both hemispheres of your brain. Nice. Now, one thing I'll mention is that for each of these buckets, Ryan, I I chose a couple time capsules. Yeah. And so each of these, I'm gonna show a couple games um, from my own childhood, maybe from yours too, maybe from the childhood of people watching. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, these some of these games. Uh, made such a deep impression on me i was i was at such a formative age when i played these games and one of those which is a direct precursor for games like divinity original sin was a game i played on my commodore 64 called pools of radiance nice which uh yep i had a commodore 64 as well did you m128 yeah this game just blew me open just blew me open and this is a literal dungeons and dragons game so it's using Dungeons and Dragons rule sets. It was one of the first major games to do so, to really quantify all of the, you know, subtleties and complexities of, of Dungeons and Dragons rules and put it into a game. And this game just like blew the RPG genre wide open. <laughs> uh, I get so much nostalgia from this game. And, you know, similar to the previous game, this is, you know, this is a game that would be magenta content, magenta mm. amber themes and orange gameplay. It's another strategy game. This is awesome. One of my, uh, two of my favorite games on the Commodore 64, and I'm not sure where they'd be at. Um, I don't know if you played them, Lucasfilm games, uh, Maniac Mansion and Zach McCracken. Yep. Uh, uh, I love those. I don't know where I'd put them at. I don't, I don't know either. Probably so, you know, red, some, maybe. Some of those are like wordplay games, so they might even be kind of magenta. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, magenta. Yeah, I know. I love them. You, know, you got to come up with the right words in order yeah. to... Yes. Right. So this game even has a heritage, though. And I'm going to go even further back in the time capsule to show you my first RPG, which got me so excited for video games. This game like haunts my memories. And it is from, uh, along with this game here, from one of my all-time video game, all-time favorite video game developers, uh, Strategic Simulations. And this one is called Wizard's Crown. And I've just been waiting for an excuse to play footage from this game on mm -hmm. Integral Show forever, uh, just for pure nostalgia's sake. Look at this game. Whoa. This looks so blocky and ugly, and yet oh, yeah. when I look at it, I can still, <laughs> I can still remember how I saw this when I was like ten years old, right? Oh, yeah. This was, I mean, this this was it. This was the most complex, glorious <laughs> game I had ever played, and it was one of the first big RPGs that was based on statistics and skills and and all. Mm. Look at this battle scene. Just look at that. that's glorious. I I I miss those graphics. That's awesome. Yeah. Wow. And in fact, I'm so enthusiastic about this game and about this uh, video game company that I'm wearing their shirt today. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's that, my, that, that logo seems familiar. Yeah, I remember that now. That's my, that's my geeky video game shirt. Dude, nice.